Yep. Is your Zara back? Matt, this is going to uh, parts of the lore that have got you thinking. Here's the deal, right? Love Here's thinking. the uh, new loading screen for this hmm. expansion. Everyone's uh, looking pretty good. Caligos kind of looks like an Elzin. So uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, hello, Yuzara. Hmm. Or is it Yuzara? Or is it Murthra? Murthra, yeah. Is Which it one both? is it? Is it, is it, is it Yuzara coming to take Murthra's body over? No, that would be stupid. That's insane. Yeah, so basically the current leader of the Greens is Murthra, who is Yuzara's daughter. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, you look at that character and it's like the blue eyes thing and the sort of moon diadem and everything. It's like that also kind of looks hmm. like uh, Yuzara. Yeah. Uh, and then that's all, you know, interesting. So here's the similarities. Facial markings, hairstyle, moon, horn style, all looking like Yuzera. The difference, though, the armor, more simple, kind of looks like some Taronda stuff, but it's also very different from Erythra's garb. And all of this is kind of, oh yeah, there's what she looks like. But again, she was less of an important character, perhaps, hmm. at this point in time, so maybe they just had, you know, a character creator model for her instead oh, of, yes, yeah. uh, you know, something that's a lot more bespoke. But I think the idea of Zara like coming back so soon is just way too quick, especially considering the final dialogue that she gave us, which was pretty much like for me to come back to Azeroth, it would have to be a pretty big thing, maybe sacrifice from a loon or something. But that said, a loon. Oh, actually, oh, this is nice though. So here's, oh yeah, Mirthra, Mirthra Legion, alive, Yuzera, <laughs> dead Yuzera. There are a bunch of new Yuzera NPCs that have been added in here. Hmm. Now, also, there's Yuzera weapons. They're called Knife 1H Yuzera and Offhand 1H Yuzera. So who the hell knows what's going on with those? And then <sighs> there are new textures for the white lady and the blue uh, child, which is, uh, you know, the moons of Azeroth. And they, of course, have got associations with Elune. They are, you know, uh, present in the short stories like the Eyes of the Earth Mother, Earth Mother and then um, that other one that was in the uh, fairy tale book. What does all this mean? Oh yeah, also, there is a Loon-themed cosmetic weapons called the Loon's Wrath and a Loon's Fury. We don't know where we get them, or what they look like. You're suspicious. Don't do this. Please. He's a suspicious man. Please don't do this. Please, uh, pl just whatever you do, please make this at least reasonable. Because if this is a Sarah back, please do it properly. If you're, do, uh, you know, bringing more Alun stuff in, please, please do it properly. And I don't know what do it properly means. All I know is, please, think about it. And think about it in a big way. It don't kind of yeah. half-ass think about it. Don't think, what will be emotionally satisfying? Bring Sarah back! Oh, the moon! The moon's finally happening because Sarah's back. Happy smile. Trying to do Sarah. Best friends forever. Make it actually something fucking enjoyable. It can't go. It can't be super quick. It can't be the Cliff Notes version that just tries to accelerate us to the big epic cinematic super quick. They actually need to take their time with this one. Yeah. I think that's why Yuzara just can't come back. Like, I mean, she, yeah, she died in Legion, but we dealt with her in Shadowlands. It should feel like there is a gap and a pause in time. But, I mean, we have known that uh, some sort of green dragon, Tyrande, night elf uh, plot, that that is going to take place in this expansion. Yeah. Please fucking do it right you shouldn't even be touching any of this side shit for like to like 10.2 or 10.3 because you don't have the time you don't have the time you don't have the budget you don't have the content you just can't please don't please don't ruin this man needs please. convincing please. i don't know like there's a way they could do it well they just have to do it slowly and they have to really focus it in on the night elves recovering they need to focus it in on that see that's the thing right they go, here's the Night Elves recovering. Hey, Sarah's back! Yeah, that's not... That's there's the There's no way that doesn't feel like a fucking train hitting you in the face. They're going to do it all at once. Yeah. What they need to do is Yuzera stuff is like two expansions down the line. Yeah. And maybe we can commune with Yuzera or something. That's fine. Uh, but we need to have it focused, way more grounded. Night Elves, where are they going to live? What are they going to do? Are the Alliance and the Horde going to support rebuilding their shit? That's what the focus has to be. Yeah, because what they're going to do is, oh, the night elves still don't have any home. <laughs> oh, what are we going to do? The green dragons will solve this problem. Is Sarah come back from the dead for this great challenge, which is, you should have probably come back from the dead to save your people in the first place. Never mind, you know, all this shit happening. Build them a new house. Is Sarah get the fucking, get the overalls out and the sledgehammer on. Overalls on, overalls on the sledgehammer out, rather. Do this, and then, oh yeah, we've got all of the birds with one stone. That is... 
the most efficient emotional fucking barrage we can open oh, upon our actual players. Because it's all about plot beats per fucking millisecond. Because that's what matters to, like, engagement. That's what matters to the the five-second prelude cut of the Dragonflight trailer, <laughs> which is here's everything that happens in the trailer because you're a fucking TikTok watcher. Because I don't, I don't think World of Warcraft players watch much TikTok. Probably but not. But anyway, it's like, that's the thing where what they need to do to have like an emotionally satisfying story is Isera's fucking gone for ages. The Night Elves really struggled like shit. Tyrande's kind of fucking lost her mind for a bit and now she's back. Malfurion, everyone at Blizzard forgot Malfurion exists so there's nothing they can do with that. So, okay, right. What do we do? Uh, the Night Elves are like, fuck it. We'll just do everything ourselves. We can't be this like people stuck in time. We have to actually move forward with our lives. You know, we can chase our immortality again or we can chase like the whole... I'm fucking Michael's moving. We can chase like the idea of we are now immortal. How do we deal with that as people? How do we deal with that as people? Do we like drastically change our culture works to be so much more focused on like uh, I guess progeny and like you know evolution and the kind of we'll build a better future for not for ourselves but for our children, you know? But then you have like the downsides of mortality. And go oh well, we don't have fucking infantry, so we have to like really change how we're feeling about you know death as a as a people because now it's like a natural thing for us mm. oh that's how we've treated nature we've always had these things that just never really super meant anything to us personally oh now we do oh we're no longer the gatekeepers and the watchers over nature we are nature look at that you've got a little philosophical cultural change you've got them moving forward without this area you've got them moving forward without this like amazing protector even the loon's gone you know Maybe Elune's a little bit quiet because Tyrande, you know, issued the Night Warrior and they're like, okay, well, Elune is a cooldown now. And then after all of that, it's like, after that, beautiful. Now you've got a, a reason for Ysera to come back and go, sorry I wasn't really around. You've done a really good job without me. I guess I really don't have a purpose here or whatever else. You're, you, you, you now as like stunted people can go exist nicely and live in the world. I don't have to watch over you or all that stuff. That kind of, these people have freed themselves because they're no longer babied by immortality. Just anything fucking emotionally reasonable like that. Mm. Even a, a loon could even have that of just, yeah, I don't need to guide you people anymore. You're fine. Just keep me in mind. I'll go do whatever the fuck I'm supposed to do as a loon, being the uh, life pantheon woman or whatever she is. Just something like that is like, but that would take time to build. That would take time to execute. That would take we need to build a new home that isn't Teldrassil. We need to maybe adjust our, you know, because obviously a lot of their, uh, I guess, construction architecture is like Japanese and Korean at the minute. Maybe they kind of adapt a little bit. Maybe they take a little bit of some learnings from their time spent in Stormwind instead of just, I oh, will fucking live in a tree. Maybe they do something a little bit different there. Adapt to the changing world. And that takes an expansion or two. But and then he yeah. brings Sarah back. Well, or they could just go, it's Sarah's back, Loon's back, Ned, I was happy. Wee. What you're saying is, yeah. don't make it like season eight of Game of Thrones in terms of its insane speed that feels completely emotionally hollow. Yeah, do the hard do thing. It yeah. nice and slowly. Do, yeah, do, do, <laughs> like literally builds. do the work, do the hard thing, not the easy thing. Yeah, don't just jump to where you want to go, build the path there. Yeah. And I think, yeah, so often they just go, you we're here. We're at the new big plot point. And yeah. now characters are just like, plot point, plot point, plot point. In the middle, eh, who cares? 